Good morning, folks. We've got three items to hit in terms of space weather, two climate articles, and one on the disaster cycle of Earth. We are starting, as always, with our star and we find a mostly calm day. There was one plasma filament that released, but it was pretty much the smallest one on the Sun, the one just left and south of the Earth's scale. Not only was it small, but it appears to have released back behind Earth's orbital position and will likely miss Earth entirely. Moving on next to the solar wind, top left we can see the plasma speed, the purple line, was rising all day yesterday and is waning back this morning. Down below we see the full day of geomagnetic instability triggered by that solar wind coupling, the yellow bars, which is also fading back down this morning. We did get one M-class solar flare, barely. It came from the larger sunspot group on the north as you will see here in 131 angstrom view, mostly a field connection based plasma acceleration that was wholly confined to the corona. The sunspots have been extremely quiet given their size, but the lead grouping has now shifted enough that we may get some more flares. Luckily, it's turned away from directly facing the Earth. Up first in the articles today is a tack on to our previous looks at Antarctic sea ice. Hopefully, we recall that many areas are gaining ice and it's only a few that are losing it rapidly. We've seen previous looks at how undersea volcanoes are found below those melting regions, and here, we confirm the geothermal heat flow control on that activity. Once again, the other areas without that heat flow are the ones known to be gaining ice. Before we move on, folks, it is the last day to grab tickets for our October 13th event. I think there are two left. And for those who already have their tickets, can't wait to see you later this week. Link is in the video description box. Coming back to our recent topic of the pole to equatorward forcing, which began with the Jupiter story in which we followed up yesterday with yet another look at how Earth has these same equatorward traveling heat waves. Let's get another this morning. Low latitude forcing due to geomagnetic storm and auroral excitement. Both disturbed dynamo effects and penetrating waves are in play. Those are the instantaneous and the minutes to hours long response to solar wind enhancement. Learn more about solar forcing of the Earth's atmosphere in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. Lastly here, folks, there yet remains some holdouts on the synchronous onset of Heinrich Stadial 2 during the last glacial maximum in the Lake Mungo geomagnetic excursion 24,000 years ago. That ends here. Just like 12,000 years ago, just like with Le Champ and the other major rapid Earth disaster shifts of the 12,000 year cycle, this event was globally onset as well after their dating adjustments of the north and south effects, confirming what most of you observers already know. These impacts happen quickly and across the world. Learn everything about this 12,000 year event, which is in the unfolding stages now, with our books, The Next End of the World and The Observer Supplement. You can find our books, tickets to our event, playlists, and more in the video description box. We greatly appreciate your support. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.